Hello, you are welcome to revision class uh, for 200 level students on reanalysis. And uh, this is one of the mandates of this particular uh, channel. And the mandate is to ensure that our students are well equipped in preparation for tests and examination. So in this course, we are going to look at some of the you know, few aspects or topics we have learned so far so that uh, our students will have uh, a refreshed memory. We want to refresh their memory, to review what they have learned is very important because reviewing what they have learned, we keep that memory fresh and they'll be able to understand better and not forget what they have learned. So we, in this course, we started with a read number system. And I would like to quickly go through the read number system briefly. The major aspect of read number system we're going to discuss is completeness, and what is the relationship between the real number and natural number? Real numbers are uncountable, while natural numbers are countable. Countability there means that you can ascribe, uh, you know, uh, a correspondence of counting, you know, just like a sequence. What's a sequence? A sequence is a function. A sequence is a function, you know, that has the domain of what? Natural number. And let's say if I say, I'm talking about sequence of real numbers now. I'll be saying, for example, let's say I have x is a you know, sequence. I have natural numbers as, as the domain, so as a word. I have R, R as the real number. So a sequence of real number, you know, is a function that shows the correspondence between natural number and real number. So basically, the major difference between real numbers and natural number, because real number is so large that it, it, it can split uh, so many uh, types of uh, Numbers, but in natural, in re, I mean, in real numbers, we have whole numbers system, we have rational number systems, we have natural numbers as well, and the likes. Okay, I say rational and ration, rational and natural. They are different. This is the what? This is the set of natural numbers and this set of rational numbers. Okay. Now, in terms of completeness of uh, real numbers, a real number is said to be complete or show completeness if it has what we call uh, upper band. And what do we mean by upper band? Good. Now, let's say that. Let S be a subset of real numbers. S is said to be banded, is said to be banded above, is said to be banded above, banded above. If one, let's say there is this, um, that's it. If, if there exists, if there exists a natural number, let me say, or a real number, x naught, I mean alpha naught, such that one s is is less than or equal to alpha naught for all s in x. Yes, that's one. And two, you know, if there exists another, uh, uh, let's say another. Uh, real number such that you know such that anyway this is basically the definition of uh, um, uh, because going I don't want us to go into supremum now let's say this now so now here this alpha naught is an upper band so this set S is banded above so this alpha naught is an upper band okay it's an upper band but if we have two or more upper bands, then that is where we'll be talking about what? The least of the upper bands. Suppose I have alpha is an upper band, alpha is an upper band. Now, if this is less than this, if what I'm saying, if this is less than this, automatically, this is going to be what? The, inf uh, the supremum, okay? Why this won't be the upper band? Because for every upper band, every upper band is greater than or equal to the supremum. Every upper band is greater than equals to the supremum. So what I'm saying there you know, is that if you're talking about completeness of a real number, it means that it has what? It has a upper, uh, least upper band. Okay? It has least upper band. Now I've said here that this is an upper band. So we have two or more, you know, you now discuss uh, the concept of what? The least upper band. And the least upper band, like I said now, I'm trying to retreat in this is that um, if there are, for, for us to have least upper band, which is the supremum, you know, 
uh, it implies this implies that uh, there are every upper band must be greater than the least upper. When we say the least, it means we still have upper band that are greater. Okay, that is that about that. Now let's quickly look at um, something under this uh, supremum and the infimum. Quickly, let's look at something there because we just have to produce a very small video. I don't want the video to be too voluminous, you know. Now let's say let's say that let S be a set of this. Uh -huh. Suppose we are asked to find the infimum of S and the supremum of S. The difference between infimum and supremum is just in terms of uh, whether they are lower bands or upper band. Every lower band, you know, because this is infimum. Infimum means the greatest lower band. So every lower band is less than or equal to this. Yes. So uh, the lower band, lower band is less than the uh, what the infimum because lower band means greatest i mean sorry infimum means greatest lower band so if it is greatest that means the all the lower bands are less okay but for supremum supremum means what the least upper band so if it is the least that means what uh, all the greatest uh, i mean lower band sorry upper band sorry all the upper bands are greater than the supremum yes because we said supremum is what is the least, so all the other upper band are greater than it. Now the infimum of this is zero, while the supremum is one. It's as simple as this. Okay, and take note, the these values zero is not in the set. One is not in the set as well. Let's look at another one quickly. Let's look at another one. We want to discuss. Let's quickly discuss uh, the relationship between maximum and supremum of sets. You know, now when do we just let's this is related to the concept of what the concept of a supremum and a infimum. Now, suppose we have this let S be a set that has zero and five. Yes, do this is set. Now, suppose we are asked to find what the upper band, the upper band for this set, the upper band for this for S. Is just s greater than or equals to five. Yes, that's the upper band. Okay. Now, what is the supremum? The supremum for x now. The supremum for x now is what? Is five. And don't forget, I said the supremum is what? The least, the least, the least upper band. So that implies that. The supremum is, you know, they say the least upper band. That means the upper bands are greater than the least upper band. That's why you have it. So. Upper band for x is going to be greater than if x is in this set for every s in the set s. So try, don't get it wrong. So, but the supremum here is this one. Now, because this set, this set, five is included. Five is included in this set. So the maximum of this set is also 5. So that means that anytime you have uh, the supremum being involved in the set, sure you get what I'm saying now. So it automatically, it means that uh, uh, this, you know, the maximum of that set is also the same thing as the supremum. Okay. Now let's look at another example. You, you understand clearly what I'm saying now. Let S be of this set. Can see? This is close, this open. Now, if I want to have the upper band here, I'm, I'm using upper band as a case study. You can use lower band too. You can use lower band. Lower, upper band for S there is still what? S greater than equals to 5, of course. Now, the supremum here, the supremum for S there, the supremum is still what? It's still 5. Now, the maximum. The maximum does not exist. Yes. This set does not have maximum. The maximum, let me write here. No maximum. Five is not the maximum here. You are wondering. Yes. Five is not the maximum because five, which happens to be the supremum, is not included in the set. It's not included. This set is open. So five is not involved. 
But in terms of upper band for the set, upper band will be greater than the same. Say, you know, we said it's greater, x is greater, it's gone for all. Let me say for all s in x. So upper band will be more than this five. Yes. Upper band. See, don't get it wrong again. Every upper band, every upper band is greater than or equals to the supremum. Because the supremum is the least of them. So all upper bands will be greater than this. So the other, on the other hand, for infimum, you know, infimum is the greatest lower band. So that means of all lower band, infimum is the greatest. So lower bands will be what? Will be less than the infimum. So that is that about uh, that. So in this case, there is no maximum for that set. What other things do we want to discuss here before we actually, uh, you know, uh, bring bring the, the class to a close? Okay. Now, let's talk about the the limit theorem or the convergence theorem that we discussed. The convergence of sequences, which we have discussed so far in the class. Okay. Let's talk about convergence of sequences that we have discussed so far in our class. Now, um, before going to that, let's talk about limits. Suppose that the limit as x n tends to x and the limit as uh, y n tends to y. So let's say n tends to infinity. Limit of x n is x. Limit of y n as n tends to infinity is y. So if you ask to find the limit as n tends to infinity of x plus y, it's very simple. It's very simple. It's just that, sorry, of xn, sorry, of the sequence xn plus uh, sequence yn. Suppose you want to find the limit of uh, sequence xn plus sequence y. Now, you know, you can separate, because limit is like what? It's like a, what? A linear map. So you can separate by having limit as xn, limit of xn as n tends to infinity plus limit of yn as n tends to infinity. So what is the limit of xn as n tends to infinity? You give you are given x plus what is the limit of uh, yn as s uh, as y n tends to infinity? You are given y. So the answer to this is what? X plus y. And if it's the same thing as if it is limits xn yn as n tends to infinity, since as you know, the limit of the sequence xn is x, so x multiplied by the unit of uh, sequence yn is y, it will be xy. Okay, that is that about that. Now, in terms of convergence, in terms of convergence, you know, there's a difference between a sequence being bounded and a sequence being convergent. You know, every convergent sequence is what? Is what? Is bounded. But not all bounded sequences are convergent. Look at this sequence. Minus... 1 raised to power n. Now, this sequence is bounded, but it's not convergent. Why? Good. It's not convergent in the sense that it has two major limits. It's alternating. If n is equal to 1 here, this will be minus 1. By the time I put n equals to 2, it will change to 1. If I put n equals to 3, it will minus 1 again. But when I put n equals to 4, it will change to 1. So the, the set the set values are minus one and one. So the sequence is bounded in the sense that if I put, if I put up the only value on it now, you know, you know, I'm going to have, since I'm going, since minus one will be, the absolute value of minus one is one. If I put uh, on, on one, two, you know, because that's two set values on one, is one. So it's bounded by one. This sequence is bounded by one. But it's not convergent. It's not convergent because it has two limits. The first limit is minus one, the second limit is one. And the limit of a sequence must be what? Must, must, be, must, must be unique. So it must not have two different limits. Now, we actually discussed uh, the concept of, uh, the concept of uh, equivalence relations. You know, I believe you have not forgotten. Equivalent relation, a, a relation is said to be equivalent if it's what? Uh -huh. Symmetric, reflexive, and what? And transitive, very good. Now, the other one, it was a, when is a sequence a relation, a relation set to be part of a partial order? A relation set to be of partial order if it is anti symmetric, reflexive, and uh, transitive. So, okay, these are things we have actually done. We've actually done. Another thing I want to remind you of is the concept of uh, bandedness of, uh, let's say, 
the bandedness of open interval. Now, if, let's say we have this five and seven. This is an open interval. This open interval is banded. You can see it has five. It has the infimum. It has the supremum. You know, so it's banded. But the moment I write something like this, let's say minus infinity and five, it's no longer banded. Once this part is not banded, you could don't call this one a banded uh, uh, interval. Now, but look at this. Look, let's say we, I want to consider this now, five and seven. The difference between this interval, this one now, and this one is just that this one is closed, this one is open. So five and seven, are, although officially, physically we say they are there, but they are not involved. But this one has five and seven involved because of what? It is a closed interval. So if I want to write x here, I'll put an element x here. I will say what? Five less than equals to x, less than equals to seven. But this one, I write it as what? Let me clean and write. This one, if I put, if I want to define element x in this interval, I will say what? Five less than x, less than seven. You can see that this one has only less than. This one has what? Less than equal to. So these two intervals are different by just what? By just by, by the geometry. The geometry of this is what? It's talking about what? Less than equal to. Why this one is less than? So they are not the same thing. So any interval that has, for example, look at this. Let's say, let's assume I put something here like this, and I say this. It's not, it's still not banded. Because the infinite infinity is not a, a definite uh, number. It's not even a number. It's not a number in mathematics. Okay, I think with this, um, with this, uh, so far we've been able to cover extensively what we have done so far. Now I don't want this video to be too, you know, to be too uh, voluminous. That is why we'll be writing off here. So don't forget we have learned uh, what real number systems. You can go and read, read your books on that, revise them. We have learned that um, co co you know completeness of real numbers. We have talked about supremum, infimum, banded, uh, bandedness, and uh, you know. We have equally learned about uh, um, what, what in, you know, uh, partial order as well as what? Uh, Trusty relation. So with this and so many other things you must have read, I have the belief that uh, you are going to do well in your coming test or examination. So anyway, it's going to be test because uh, we say we're still going to do more of this course before you go for your exam. So thank you very much. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumb up, share, comment, and like. God bless you.